Martin Gray after a 2 0 defeat for his side that extinguished all hopes of York City making the playoffs. Did you know the score at half time, first of all, Martin? Because we thought for a few moments that maybe it was going to go your way today. Yeah, we, we did know the results. We seen what was coming through, and uh, you know, I thought, you know, the, the players. We didn't sort of play heavily on that, but I just, you know, I felt that at that stage it could have been your day. The results were all going for you. I thought the performance first half up the hill was good. Sean Newton should score to make it one nil, uh, and you go in half time nil nil, and you think, you know, with the slope second half, the momentum. Uh, I thought we had to bring John Parton on just to give us a little bit of threat, a goal threat, and uh, I think the change in the game was when his goal was disallowed. For me, it's just John being strong, out muscles there, centre half, uh, and I think at 1 1, you possibly have the momentum then to go and win the game. Yeah, we were surprised by the, the disallowed goal. Is that why? Is the, was he just too strong? Is, did, I saw you go to the referee, is that what he said to you? I think you've seen the reaction from all the players. I think John just does what he does well. He gets in positions, he out muscles people for the strength and power. And, uh, you know, the referee, I felt, had a poor game for both teams, all game. Uh, and, as you say, at 1-1, you know, we back on it. And, uh, you know, with the slope and with the forwards and the pitch, you like to think that you can go on and, and win the game. What do you think of your side's performance overall? Because Brackley created more chances than your side, didn't they? They did, they did. But I thought, first half, we had better chances. We had two great chances. Sean Newton had two great chances. Uh, we, you know, Morton played. They didn't create much first half at all. But I don't remember seeing Bartlett have to puff up, pull off any real big saves. Uh, but, you know, the, I suppose it was a free game for them today. They had the, the, nothing to play for, we had nothing to go for. We were a little bit open in the second half, at 2-0 down, uh, just trying to claw one back in the game. That second half, it sort of encapsulated so many games as well this season, the opposition scoring at around the same time as so many teams have, and then you've just not been able to come back, albeit the disallowed goal in there. And I think, yeah, I don't want to dig players out, but if you look at the first header, his centre-half doesn't win his first header. They pick up the piece for the midfield player, doesn't stay with his runner. And the score from it, there's another centre half second, you know, for the second goal, gets pinned, the lad twists and turns him. You've got to do better than that as a defender. You know, I don't see John Parton getting a free journey, a free ride up top. You know, their centre half, so, you know, give them a real tough, tough game for 90 minutes. So we've got to improve all areas of the pitch. Uh, I need to apologise to the fans of York City because we haven't achieved, uh, and I take the blame for that. As a manager, you know, we have achieved, we haven't achieved, and all I can do is apologise and make sure that we put it right. I saw you talking to some of the fans actually at the end, you were shaking hands with them, you going across and having a chat with them, seemed to be warmly received from where we were, is that how it was? It's just the frustrations, why wouldn't they be frustrated? They go to work, they earn the money, they travel all the way down here, and they come away with nothing. The end of the season's been a disaster, and we've got to put it right, we've got to give the people of York, the fans, Something to go for, and you know, as I said to you last week, judge me with my own players. Just give me my best chance, and I'll do that. And when you see players, you'll be some, hopefully one or two good signs by Friday. Uh, judge me with what I put out there, then you'll see what success is. How was John Parkins? A bit of an unexpected bonus, I suppose, having him on the bench today. He's trained one day out of the last five weeks. He trained yesterday, so it was a massive. Just throw him out there, but John does what he does. He's, he scores goals. He's, the, he's probably the only goal threat we have since I've been at the club. We've relied too heavily on John Parkin at his age of years. Uh, we've had to play a formation which has been very difficult because you know it's just, just you know it's been the teams the club's been built around John Parkin this season and we've got to uh, make sure we bring in more attacking options to give John the support uh, and John the breathing space out. You can't just keep relying on a John Parkin. Salford's top goals top, top goal scorer this year is 12 goals. The goals are shared up between the team and uh, we've got to also contribute from all areas as well. How many of those players that play today will we not see in a York City shirt again? Are you able to sort of give us some sort of ballpark figure? No, it's not right to do that because I haven't spoken the players yet. I'll speak them all Monday morning uh, and then we'll, we'll have them conversations. And people like Aidan Connolly not being involved in the squad, was that injury or can we read, read more into that, do you think? He wasn't in the team. So you've got a busy week coming forward, probably your busiest summer as a manager, sort of reinventing this whole squad, I suppose. Yeah, there'll be no holders. It's into work every day. This is my busiest time of the year. We've got to get this right. Uh, recruitment is key for every club at any level and we've got to make sure that we bring in more right than wrong. Our recruitment hasn't been good enough up to now and we've got to look at ourselves and hold your hand up. We've made mistakes and we can't afford to go forward. You know, I've always been quite open, honest, outspoken. Uh, we've got to get it right and uh, you know, the, the board of directors, they give us a back end. We need the right mentality of people that can handle a York crowd that really wants success and you need seniors that can step out there and when they're under pressure, still play with the belief the discipline, don't go hiding, don't go being scared, you know, crowds get frustrated purely because they want success. This club's had a tough, tough, horrid time for the last two years and we've got to turn it around. 
And it's playing for a it's playing for a York City. We've lost that. We're still there. Yes, we are. It's playing for a York City in this division, different from playing for many of the other sides in the National North. Well, every game's a cup final for the opposition, and rightly so. You know, it doesn't matter whether York go home and away. Everybody wants to beat you. But that's that's the level we are. We just got to accept we are where we are, and the expectations are, are so big. And you've got to be a, a make, make sure as coaches, players, managers, you can handle the pressure that comes with York City because it's a massive club. That shouldn't be where it is, but it's here for a reason. We've got to remember that it's here for a reason. And we've got to get it back where it needs to be. Well, thank you for talking to us live on BBC Radio York, not just today, but throughout the season. We look forward to seeing what you're going to do in the, in the close season. Thank you. Thanks very much. Thank you. Cheers, Martin.